What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Touchdown with Doug Smith and friends. Folks, we're going to jump into a Philadelphia Eagles mock draft. Guys, we got some heavy hitters on this screen. But before you click away just because you saw some you didn't like, stay to the end because my co-host from the Time Out with Eric Wren talk show, sports show, he's on the show with us here today. He's a lifelong Eagles fan, and he's going to break down why he chose what he chose, why he chose them, the skills that they ultimately bring, and how these players in a mock draft either like this or similar to this can ultimately bring the Philadelphia Eagles back to prominence. That's a Super Bowl victory. Introducing my special guest, and before we get into our mock draft today, Eric, man, how you doing today, man? Doing well, doing well. I hope everybody else is doing out very well. If you're having your morning coffee or you're having a nightly whiskey, I'm glad for you to be here with us. Yes, sir, man. Let's get into it, man. And if you want to follow Eric, go down below in the description. All stuff is there. Let's kick it off with the 22nd pick of the 2024 NFL draft for the Philadelphia Eagles. Eric, who did you choose and why? Hey, I chose Enos Rackestraw. Uh, he is a junior in Missouri. He's a cornerback, uh, six foot, 187, slight in the frame, but extremely long and has an electric style of play. Big plays, fast reads, and he reads routes better than the wide receivers he's going against. Uh, I think that he's going to make a pretty big impact in our secondary. We need some guys that will go out there and make some plays, make some tackles. He's one that will definitely bring the bang. I love it. Love it. Then at number 50, you got, man, one of the best players in the draft, man, Tyler Newbin coming out of Minnesota, man. This dude's a dog, man. And if he slides to 50, which is very possible, it's a very well-balanced draft. Tyler Newbin is that guy, man. Why'd you, why did you choose Tyler, man? So experience, experience, experience. I like the guy. He's a senior. Uh, so, of course, a little bit later than we would like as far as a breakout. But he's ball hawking fantastic size dude is 6'2 210 no errant passes can be made around this guy his catching radius is phenomenal and he also blitzes well out of the nickel package love it love it then moving on to jonathan brooks running back coming out of texas absolute dog man definitely in the top five running back conversation man d got man man why, why why did why did you choose jonathan brooks man Shh tell no one but this guy is going to be a gem of the draft in 2024 quote me the dude was an all-around athlete in high school he's six foot 202 pounds honestly he may be the next coming of a running back that we're familiar with uh christian mccaffrey but uh mm -hmm. runs a 4 4 40 and it's just dude pops right off the tape yeah yeah, the tape don't lie, man. The tape does not lie. There are other running backs who are statistically had bigger years than him, man. But Jonathan Brooks, man, he made the most of every opportunity, man. And uh, the, the tape pops. The tape don't lie, man. So uh, we'll see how he how he tests. Uh, we got, you know, we got the NFL Combine literally a week and a half away from the time that we filmed this, right? So yes, sir. Um, th th this is a guy that could potentially be an early second round pick if he has a big pro day, uh, pro day drafted, but. It, if not, he'll be sitting right here, man, and the Eagles will definitely snag him up. I don't see a world where they don't get a, a running back. Uh, moving on, man, Junior Colston coming out of Michigan, linebacker, man. Nice pick up there. Yeah, um, I think our linebacker room is nice, but it wouldn't hurt if we had a couple of additions. Uh, junior Colston, I like him. He's a Michigan linebacker. Dude had no – slight as far as the competition that he played against very stiff competition obviously he was a national champion uh has a four five forty dude had no less in all three years 520 snaps that's a lot of experience man and uh he really had a big interference as far as disrupting passes uh dude had I mean, phenomenal just breakups, intercept, no interceptions, but his breakups were extremely high. I love it. I love it. Um, then next pick, man, what'd you, who you got and why? 
<laughs> Jordan Whittington. So this guy, uh, four four forty. So that's not bad. But I'm gonna give you one guess on what he ran in the shuttle. What's that? Four flat. Six one, medium size, two oh four. Not bad. So we're looking at around a Jamar Chase type of frame. But what I liked about this guy was extremely sharp in his route mm -hmm. running. Dude had a QB rating of 105.7. Gee. Yeah, when targeted. Insane. Yeah. That's big time, man. That is big time. Uh, then moving on, uh, Gabe Hall coming out of Baylor. Why'd you choose him, man? Big Gabe Hall. Yeah, man. D-line. Heavy hands. Uses him very aggressively. Uh, he shows the ability to disengage and out grapple his blockers. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as the old coaches like to say, put them in a phone booth. Yeah. Um, but he's extremely savvy and versatile. I think this man is very bright on the line, which we could definitely use. Uh, it's more of a deaf piece. Um, our defensive line is pretty stout. Um, our young boys are ready to step up. And, uh, you know, if Fletcher decides he's going to retire for good, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which he is not yet at this point in time announced whether he's going to or not. Uh, I think he could be something to behold. Uh, this dude made Bruce Feldman's freakiest list Ooh. ranked number 17 as far as an athlete. Ooh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Inches 500 pounds, power cleans 465 pounds, and did 750 on the deadlift. It's a bad man. <laughs> Big I love it. I love it. And then the next person, man, we got Kitan Oladepo, man. Um, I'll, I'll tackle this one just real quickly, man. This dude had some beautiful stats. Two interceptions, mm -hmm. uh, one fumble recovery, one forced fumble, one sack, but 44 solo tackles, man. So now that you watch the tape, you have a guy who's east to west. He gets to places very quick and line up in multiple different coverages. Uh, this, this man had seven pass deflections. That's one of my favorite right next to interceptions. Seven pass deflections. The year before that, he had six pass de deflections. The year before that, he had nine. So we're talking about a guy altogether who has had uh, well over 20 pass deflections in a four-year college career. Well, really three years, but he started a little bit his freshman year. Mm -hmm. The dude is, uh, has a whole body of work. So NFL, play NFL teams and scouts are really going to know the, the full scope of what they're getting in this player and the value that he brings. A lot of people sleep on Oregon State, but Katan is that guy, man. You have any uh, notes on the, any other notes on him, man? Hey, I like him. He's a capable hitter, closes really fast. Uh, really, the type of cornerback that uh, Vic Vangio loves, bro. Mm, he okay. just loves to make this guy kind of a sleeper. You don't see him coming, and then boom, lays a hit on you. Love it, love it. Then out of the McCaffrey family. Luke McCaffrey, man. Why did you choose him, man? Why is he so special? Is it just the last name or is it something that he actually puts tangible on the field, man? What are your thoughts on Luke, man? Hey, everybody knows the name McCaffrey. You know, it's a hot commodity in the NFL. Yeah. Uh, but honestly, Luke kind of looks like an anti villain in a Disney movie. Ooh. Ooh. But. But as okay. you asked, does he produce on the field? Yes, I think he accelerates extremely quickly. Uh, very great route runner. Uh, it's kind of solid with the ball tracking skills, which, you know, playing against your brother, I'm sure you learn that very quickly. Um, often used in deep routes, but he does create separation on the sideline. Okay. I love it. Excellent love it. speed. And then the last pick of the draft, Sheridan Jones, cornerback Clemson. Talk to me, man. Why did you choose another cornerback? Another one. Hey, man, we looked kind of scarce. And I think we're going to try and make this competition in the cornerback room very strong. Sheridan, up and under receiver's chin, has great speed, flips his hips like no other. I mean, dude is going to be a problem in probably a couple years. He'll be a bit of a project at the beginning of his career, but I think he's going to make some noise come year three. Love it. Love it. And, and, and you know, that's what the round six and seven pretty much are. 
You know what I mean? Uh, Katan, I mean, I think he was just probably slide because he's coming from Oregon State. Um, however, Luke McCaffrey, project. Sheridan Jones, project. I mean, so those last two picks. But, hey, you know, there there's people who pop off all the time in round six and seven who end up doing better than people in the first round. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, almost every year pretty much there's someone in the first round who doesn't work out. You know what I mean? And, and their career just kind of fizzles out coming into year five and they don't have a contract going to year five, year six of their career. Right. So, um, yeah, man, but I love this. I love your I love your mock draft. Ladies and gentlemen, comment below. Let us know. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you hate it? Do you like it? It's all good. Eric and I both got thick skin. Also, as well, I'm going to put it one more time up on the screen. Eric, tell the people where they can go ahead and follow you, man. Hey, Time Out with Eric is going to be a podcast that's bringing you the fire, the facts, truth, the ugly. You know exactly where to find me. It's going to be on all your socials. It's going to be on Instagram. It's going to be on Thread. Right now, very active on Twitter. So let's get to it. I love it, man. Man, you guys heard it there first. All stuff is going to be all the way down below in the description. So you don't even got to go typing it in. In the meantime, God bless you guys. Hit that subscribe button. I cover all 32 NFL teams, and I have one of the meanest, baddest NFL draft content on the internet. I have the actual players coming on the show. We'll see you guys next time on the Touchdown with Doug Smith. God bless. Peace. Thank you for watching another episode of the Touchdown with Doug Smith, where we have exclusive NFL content and exclusive NFL interviews. Be sure to hit that like and that subscribe button. Follow us on social media. See you on the next one.